Hey everyone, in the previous video I taught you how to iterate through a dictionary and grab the key. And you can use that key to get the element, the actual value at that key. However, there's a better way to do it. And that is to actually put another variable here. We'll call it lm for element. And then instead of getting it from emails, you're gonna get it from emails.items. And what we can do here is actually just print the element. Run this and we get the exact same output as the previous example. So I wanna go through an example of what we could use a hash table for, and that is to keep track of occurrences through some data. So what we'll do is we're going to create a, a giant string, and I want to count all the occurrences of certain words. So let's start fresh, we'll clear out this, and what is our dictionary going to be? The dictionary is going to hold the words we're looking for. Let's say we're looking for all of the conjunctions, so, the fanboys thing, uh, which is for, and, nor, but, or, I can't even remember them all, but let's just write it out. We'll just say conjunctions. This is going to be a dictionary, and we'll just say the value for. This is, everything's gonna start at zero, and it's gonna be zero. We have nor, but, or, yet, and lastly we have so and then next we're going to put a string here and i wrote this poem that i just wanted to share it's deep from my heart so i'm just going to paste that here so the easiest thing to do is to split this out into words and then we can iterate through it so it'll do that what we could do is just say data is completely original poem split and by default it'll split it by words so just to prove you guys we can print data and let's run this make sure we get what we expect and yes, we have a list of a bunch of words. And then what we can do is say for word in data. And here's where we would check to see if it's within our dictionary of words we are looking for. So if word in conjunctions, we need to update that value. So to update the value, what we do is we say conjunctions. And for the key, we're going to use that word and reassign it what is originally there, but increase it by one. Another way to write this, which is a lot prettier, is to just say plus equals one. Now the only other thing that I wanna do is just do some lower casing because remember that uppercase and lowercase are two different characters. If we don't wanna worry about that, then all we have to do is say if stir.lower and pass in word. And then same thing here, we would say stir.lower. That's optional, but I just thought that would be a good addition. And then lastly, the thing you just do at the end is just to print the conjunctions dictionary. So we'll just say conjunctions, and it'll tell us how many times these words appear in this poem. So run it and check it out. Four shows up zero times and one time. The rest is zero except but, which is one time. This concept could easily be created into a function that takes maybe a list of words that you're looking for and then the data to look for, and then it returns a dictionary of how many times those words show up. And this concept could be applied to basically analyze data to see maybe how aggressive it is or how, how many vulgar words are used or whatever it might be, basically searching through data to figure out what it's trying to say. So that's just one example of how you could use a dictionary, but I'm sure there's tons of different things out there. Another popular use is memoization, which is basically maintaining values that are hard to calculate for functions to optimize code. So for example, if you're calculating factorials, memoization is very commonly used because calculating a factorial is very expensive. Next up, we're gonna talk about another data structure known as a set, which works in a similar way, but it's no longer going to be a key value pair. So stay tuned for that, I'll see you then. 